Okay. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation already. And also thank you very much for the IAC for uh, let us present our work here in, the, in, in this uh, exhibition. My name is Jose Daniel Garcia Spinel. I'm the technology transfer of ACCIONA. I don't know if a lot of people here know who's ACCIONA, but they would like to present very shortly uh, what, is, what means ACCIONA. ACCIONA is one of the top 10 companies in Spain. Uh, we have more than uh, 30,000 employees in our company, more than 75 years of history. Uh, our net investment each year is more than 223 million euros. And also, uh, talking about innovation, our figures in innovation are 180 million euros every year that we invest in R&D. It's more or less for you to know uh, our company and what means ACCIONA here in, in our country. Uh, this presentation I've called uh, Concrete Large-Scale 3D Printing, the alignment of two worlds, engineering and architecture. That's one of my key points that I would like to uh, explain it to you, to all people who is here or around my, my presentation. First of all, I would like to explain why ACCIONA is pushing so hard in innovation. We have been talking about an investment each year of 180 million euros of money get into the sack of innovation. And the answer is very, very easy. You know, as a lot of people here know, uh, in Spain, in our country, we have had a lot of problems. We have a, big, a huge crisis during these last 10, year, 10 years. And our company, uh, 10 years ago, decided to go abroad, to go abroad to Spain. Our market uh, each year is less in Spain and is more abroad out of our borders, and we realize that all our projects uh, that we uh, win in different uh, uh, bits were all related with technology. We cannot survive abroad talking uh, if, we forget if we forget technology and also innovation. That's the main point uh, because we uh, put a lot of money and a lot of effort trying to develop technology. And here, for example, you can see in the slide I have behind several projects that we have uh, introduced technology in different parts of the projects that allow us to go abroad and to compete with all different countries all around the world. First of all, for example, in Canada, the A30, where we built uh, the longest uh, launched bridge, uh, is the second longest bridge in North America. It's a, a deck that more than five kilometers long that we push from one side of the Bernois Channel to the other side. The second project I would like to present is the Porto de Azú. It's a huge port in Brazil where we build floating caissons. We are talking about concrete caisson of 60 meters per 30 meters per 30 meters are huge blocks of concrete. And we, are, uh, uh, we build more than five kilometers uh, of our breakwater into the sea. Also, we like to talk about the Adelaide desalinization plant is the biggest uh, desalination plant in the world that was also built by ACCIONA. And I would like also to finish with our business of renewable energy. Uh, for example, the Gouda uh, wind farm. It's a very big wind farm in South Africa for a, with more than 135 megawatts of power installed in South Africa. Those are examples of projects where ACCIONA have developed technology and have earned the bids, in this case, thanks to the technology. Why? Are we pushing so hard innovation? Because we cannot compete a war abroad with traditional construction techniques. It's very easy to know. We cannot compete, for example, in Brazil or in Mexico with local construction companies that are obviously more cheaper, are cheaper than us. We cannot come from Spain, go to Mexico, Brazil, and do projects cheaper than them. So we develop technology and we put the technology inside all the projects we did in Action Now. In that case, for example, you can see in the slide behind me several technologies that we have developed in ACCIONA during these years, like, for example, composites. I don't know if you know composites. Composites are glass fiber, canvas fiber, aramid, new materials that we introduce in the construction field. And we can uh, build, for example, uh, breakwaters, like you can see before, or also the longest fault bridge in the world that was made in, in Cuenca several years ago. We also are working with nanotechnology very important also for the future, and also building information modeling that is a need that now we have in all our projects outside Spain. But talking about uh, large-scale 3D printing, I would like to tell you a little tale, you know, and a story. Why ACCIONA start working with 3D printing? Uh, one little printer 
is a plastic printer, you know, that loaded a lot of a lot of plastic printers here. Uh, we buy them to some guys for some for some students from the Carlos uh, III University in Madrid. Uh, it was some guys that uh, that made an, a startup and they start uh, selling these machines. It was called Live to 3D, I think. And uh, this uh, little plastic machine came to Acciona, and there were a lot of people that was interested in the technology. You know, they say, oh, right, this is a printer, a little printer, plastic things, and so. And the printer starts moving different areas, different departments in Acciona. Um, one month later, the 3D printer, the little 3D printer made of plastic, uh, the final destination of the printer was uh, the desk of our president. You know, at the top of the desk of our president, it was the 3D printer, and our president says, came here, guys from innovation, to my desk, and we're going to talk a little bit about 3D printing, no? We go to the desk to talk with our president, and our president says, I'm very concerned about this technology. As we have told before, in Acciona, we have one important area that is construction, another one is logistics. And our president said, means what that means, what this technology could mean for a logistic business. This is going to change everything. If you can manufacture it uh, just when you need these elements, that is something that is going to impact a lot in our business. So that was very interesting for us, for innovation guys, because we have the, you know, we have the, uh, the push and the effort of our president to try to investigate, to try to do research talking about 3D printing. And that was the way that why in Acciona, a big construction company in Spain, started to work in 3D printing. That was the beginning, you know? And everything said, oh, oh we have, the, we have the, the, the project, we have the resources, and now we have to start working. What did we decide? We uh, go to the market and ask to everyone that was trying to work in large scale 3D printing what they were doing and how we can collaborate with them. In that case, we realized that large scale 3D printing has three legs, three important legs. First one, the machine, the 3D printer. Second one is the material. And third one is the design, architectural and engineering designs. This is something that could seem obvious, but it's really, really important because we don't have to develop one technology. No, no, no. It's three technologies in one. Large scale 3D printing technology means three developments just in one, combined to develop and to reach the final, the final goal. So we start looking for machines, you know, into the market. We go to universities, we go to technological centers, we go to a lot of technology, techni technicians, most reputed technicians in the world. And at the end, we realized that there were more or less two ways to advance, talking about machines. One of them we call, this is, this is something that we use, this, this name is the North American School, most common called contour crafting. And the second one is the European School uh, that I think that the most important technician is Mr. Dini with this safe 3D printing technology. Yeah, thank you, Enrico. <laughs> In that case, uh, we start um, talking with different people, also with Professor Cornelius of uh, Contour Crafting, University of South California, and we realize that both technologies have advantages and disadvantages. We made an analysis and we said, well, talking about Contour Crafting, the advantages are high performance, not fixed dimensions, the technology could be scalable, and also durability of the materials. This is the advantages of the technology. But also, this technology has big disadvantages. The big disadvantages are, first, the limited limit geometry. It's not really freeform. You know, I don't know if you know this technology, but this technology is like a machine that is uh, taking the concrete, that's pouring the concrete like threads, you know, making walls or something like that. Um, that's very interesting, for example, if you're making walls, because uh, you put the thread uh, at the top of another thread that you have put be uh, below. But when you have to jump, you know, there are some problems that you have to solve with another kind of techniques. That is not really a free-form technique, you know. It's something that is limited and it must be considered into, in your design. Second one is the love exterior surface. The surface of these kind of elements, as you can see here in the pictures, are not regular ones, are loved ones. Another one is that not the structural elements have been done. As you can see here, uh, more or less, this is, the, this is the kind of element that has been done. There is also an, a Chinese company that has done some walls and something like that, but there are no huge, important elements done with this technology. And to end is that not, yes, it's not easy to combine materials. In this case, you have concrete and you pour concrete, nothing else. If we talk about the, the safe 3D printing technology, 
the advantages of this technology is really a free form technology. You can do whatever you want. If you are able to design something, you are able to manufacture it. The second one is the good finishing surface. Uh, you, you can see here, these kind of elements are totally different to the contour crafting elements. The third point, sorry, is that it's easy to change the process. And the fourth point is that it's easy to combine several materials in the 3D printing process. I think that this is the key points of this technology. Also, of course, it has some disadvantages, this technology. If not everything is pretty, you know? The disadvantages are that you need to improve the material. The second one is that you need high manpower needed in the material. And the third one is that there is no a design method developed to manufacture all these kind of structural elements. So in Axonia, in Axonia, we decide to work in this way. We choose the European path, as you can see. In this slide, we take the positive elements and we try to solve the negative elements. For example, talking about the material, we change the material. We use different kind of materials in order to use this technology. Also, we reduce the manpower. We have to reduce the manpower in order to have low cost uh, elements. And third point, if we develop a design method combining architecture and engineering knowledge. Talking about materials, uh, we have been working with four different materials. Uh, the first one is the material that is uh, originally used by this aid, is magnesium based materials. These kind of materials, uh, materials are very interesting, are based on magnesium, and as also the magnesium could be uh, obtained, for example, from salty water. So it's a sustainable material, a very interesting material, but has also some several limitations, for example, like durability, and for example, like cost. Uh, we also to, uh, work with geopolymers and also with Banasem. These are also very interesting materials, are sustainable materials that uh, don't use Portland cement. I use, in this case, waste from different kinds of industry, like fly ash, like slugs, and that allows us to make concrete with more sustainable cements. And also, of course, we work with micro-concrete. Micro-concrete is very interesting because, at least, it's, the, it's a well-known material, quite difficult to dosage this, this material uh, using this te technique, but it's very interesting because it's cheap and also uh, it has solved all the problems of durability. So we work with these four kind of materials and we are working with, with four of them. Talking about designs, I think that this is the key point you know, of my presentation. Uh, when we are talking about design, we have to mix two different worlds, architecture and engineering. In this case, the architecture, uh, we have the collaboration, the most appreciated collaboration of the Institute for Advanced Architecture, Architecture of Barcelona, the IAC. Uh, we work with them uh, talking about computational design. They do for us the computational design and also the topological optimization. We mix that knowledge with the knowledge that we have in Acciona, talking about engineering. Uh, we have a lot of engineers, civil engineers like me, that has a lot of knowledge. We make it all, mix it all, and we open a new world. What that means a new world? Something like you can see here. This element, for example, I don't know if you have been in the exhibition before. This is a project. This is the last project that we have done with the IAC. This is the modulated wall. This modulated wall has been designed by, by the IAC and has been manufactured by Acciona. Not this one. This is the plastic one. If you want to, to see the big one, you can see there. This is the concrete. Uh, is 1.5 per 1.5 more or less 0.1 one meter. And you can see there, this is uh, a proof that things in large scale can be done with concrete and also with a mixture of these two technologies. Where are the applications? Where are the current markets for this kind of technologies? The current markets, uh, we think, that are not functional markets. We have to look for markets where added value for the design is considered. We cannot go to try to substitute a traditional beam made of reinforced, steel reinforced concrete. It's not, it's not, it's not had no sense, you know? We have to go to that kind of market that uh, uh, added value is very interesting. For example, in this case, also it's very important that talking about large scale 3D printing is not going to substitute traditional uh, construction techniques. We say that uh, large scale 3D printing is going to open new markets and is going to alert existing ones. You can see here different uh, um, areas where we consider that this could be applied. For example, architectural singular constructions. You can see the pictures below, uh, behind me. Uh, there are some examples done by, done by this ape. 
uh, of big scale uh, constructions. Also, there is another important area like preservation of cultural heritage. Also here we have, uh, I don't know if you know this one. Uh, if there is some Spanish guy here, I'm sure they know this. This is called Dama de Elche. This is an Iberian sculpture discovered two centuries ago. And this sculpture, you can see at the back of the curtains, you can see done in large scale 3D printing. It's a piece like this, you can see in the picture. It's 1.2 meters tall. And, and to finish, the elements of urban, of urban furniture. You can see there are some examples of elements that we have done, like a fountain, uh, like some elements for urban furniture. And the future, and with this is my last, last slide, which is going to be the future for large scale 3D printing? Uh, we think that the future is not yet written, of course. We think that we need clients that support this technology. I think that this is very, very important. And also, uh, we think that the sky is the limit. Everything you are able to design is possible to manufacture. So we have to combine architectural world with engineering world, put them work together, and obtain this kind of thing. For example, let us dream a little bit. 3D printed buildings. You can see some very fantastic uh, designs behind me. You can see also 3D printed bridges. Why not? That's a possibility also. That could be in the future. Or also you can see 3D printed urban spaces, like those that you can see here, like uh, submarine museums, like um, a lot of things that could be done with large scale 3D printing. And I would like to finish my presentation with one question. It's a question for all people that is here. This is the future, but is really the future or not? I think that this is a question that could be solved in the round table that we have before already. Thank you very much to all people. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.